going to keep talking in this video about states being fictions, and I want to just teach a really effective analogy, whether you're dealing with a bureaucratic attack or you're just debating or discussing this issue with somebody who believes that your physical presence, your, your geographic location, is actually evidence that you're within a state or that you're within a city or that you're within a church. And I use the church example because religion, and I like the religious analogy, because religion is, seems to be inherently divisive. So regardless of what someone's religious affiliation is or not, if you use the analogy, it tends to really bring out <laughs> some emotion in people. And it, it actually, you know, unbeknownst to them, will get, you, will get them on your side. So if they're opposing you and the idea that physical location is not sufficient, evidence to prove presence within a state, going through this analogy will change their mind and they will see it from a new perspective and they'll understand that it's a complete and utter fallacy to think that your physical location has anything to do with your presence within a state. I mean, they're, they're com almost completely unrelated. So I want to go through and real quick, we have uh, Letitia Toombs. Can we let me blow that up a little bit more uh, for just a second? We'll, we'll uh, yeah, there we go. We got a Letitia Toombs. And she's an attorney here in, uh, in Weber. For the, he's, she's this county attorney. And uh, so the evidence we have just here shows that the state of Utah is not, absolutely not a geographic area. It is just a fiction because it's a plaintiff. That's all we need. I don't have to go any further than that, but she's going to give us more. It's the state's objection and the state's argument. <laughs> so as far as I know, geographic areas do not argue. And uh, we tend to lock people up who think they're getting... Anyway, you, the ground isn't talking. I'm, I'm sure Ms. Uh, Toombs, who hasn't called me back yet, and I don't expect her to, she's not taking her marching orders from the ground. So we know the state of Utah is not the ground. So what we have is we have a, a similarity. We have religious fictions and we have political fictions, and they work basically the same way. So in the religious equivalent to a county or a city would be a parish, let's say in a Catholic church. Uh, the parish, in fact, they still use parishes in Louisiana. So you see here, and these are all fictions, by the way. Uh, none of these are actually real. So if you look at a map of North America, which we'll go to in a moment, you'll see that these lines aren't there. These are all fictions. These only exist on paper in the minds of politicians or uh, religious uh, leaders of the Catholic Church. And, uh, but they're the same thing. So the parish is the equivalent of a county or city, and then you have the Catholic diocese, uh, see, uh, like the Catholic Diocese is the equivalent of a state. So we'll go to the official directory of the Catholic Church in Australia, and we see these lines. Now, if we go to a an actual satellite picture of you know something real, we see that there are no of Australia. We see that there are no political or religious lines here. So what the what the politics do, what the politicians and the religious people do, is they take something like this and then they draw lines. Okay, so just like your kids, they draw lines. And these, it, it, and so they believe that this, these, oh, well, let's use this, I'll blow this up a little bit. There you go. They believe that when Australia, when you take these lines and you put them on a piece of, on, on the map, that this is the Darwin diocese. They think this is real. They act as if this is real. Or like the politicians will go like down here, they'll say, well, this is the state of Victoria or the city of Melbourne. And, um. Uh, now, we know that if you're physically located in Melbourne, does that mean that you're a member of the Catholic Church? Now, if we're going strictly on the facts, your physical location in Melbourne and the diocese, you know, okay, so it just happens to be on, you know, the diocese of Melbourne. Does your physical location and only your physical location prove that you're a member of the Catholic Church? But no, of course not. And that's where it's really effective because they do the same thing, of course, in North America where, or any, any, uh, any, any part of the world. They'll take something like this and then they blow up. We'll blow that up there. What they do is just like the Catholic Church, the religious leaders, they will put their political fictions on there. And it, it goes the same way. So this is what, what I do. I run someone through this analogy. I say, look, just like with this in Australia. And I'll say, look, if you're physically located in Perth and you're within the, these lines that you're in the Perth Diocese of the Catholic Church, does that mean you're a member of the church? And of course, especially if they're not Catholic, they'll recoil in horror and say, absolutely not. So, you say, so your physical presence within this, these lines is absolutely no evidence whatsoever you're a member of the Catholic Church. And they'll agree. 
So once someone's on your side now and understands that your physical presence is no evidence whatsoever to being a member of a church just because you happen to be within the fictional parish or diocese, then they're able to understand a lot better that physical presence and physical presence alone is no evidence whatsoever that you are present within the state, whether it be the state of Utah or, or the state of Arizona or the state of Victoria. It doesn't matter. It's all the same type of fiction. And remember, we know that states are fictional because states do not make arguments. So this has been a very effective analogy for me. But it, like I always say, you have, to meet, have, you have to meet people at their map of the world. And they don't believe, most people will already believe that your physical presence does not equal membership in a church. So then once you've made that connection, it's that much easier to then show that physical presence has nothing to do with presence within the state, which, of course, is just another fiction, of course, because they don't argue.